In 1963, 11 anti-apartheid revolutionists were accused and put on trial for over 221 acts of sabotage. A significant anti-apartheid leader named Nelson Mandela took responsibility to fight for black South Africans' rights. The Ravona trial began the process through which black South Africans seized responsibility for their rights by first resisting, then ending laws of apartheid. This turning point in history was known as the Ravona trial. Due to deep-seated racism among South African whites, the National South African Party established apartheid as law in 1948. Apartheid is a policy or system of segregation on grounds of race. Anti-apartheid organizations such as the African National Congress ANC, and the Pan-Africanist Congress PAC, was established to fight against it. Not all anti-apartheid revolutionists were black. Some were whites who were also against apartheid. In 1950, the apartheid government began stripping Africans of their rights, starting with banning marriages between blacks and whites. The National South African Party was responsible for the creation of apartheid laws, such as the Population Registration Act in 1950, which was a law created to divide the people into three different categories, black, white, and colored. During this time, blacks were forced to carry passbooks, which included their date of birth, age, job, etc. Blacks also could not use the same bathroom as whites, go to the same schools, or ride the same buses. Tired of living in fear, hunger, and isolation, blacks began to fight for their lives. Several events of rebellion and protest began to happen, and one event in particular changed the African people, which was the Sharpeville Massacre. The Sharpeville Massacre occurred on March 21, 1960. The PAC led a massive group of 5,000 black Africans to protest nonviolently against apartheid. As they were protesting and moving toward the police station, the police suddenly opened fire, wounding about 180 and killing 69 Africans. Africans were shocked that they would open fire and became even more rebellious. Thus, the government banned the two anti-apartheid organizations, African National Congress ANC, and PAC, causing the activists to hide underground. One ANC leader named Nelson Mandela was a truly awe-inspiring voice for the blacks. Mandela was born in July 18, 1918 in a small village called Mvezo. He was well educated and studied politics in college. Mandela became involved in a small wing in the ANC called the African National Congress Youth League ANCYL, and was later elected to be an ANC leader. Mandela played a key role in bringing the ANC to understand and change their view from nonviolent revolution to violent revolution. Thus, they created a military wing in their organization called Umkanto We Sizwi, also termed MK. The purpose of Umkanto We Sizwi was to fight against the apartheid government using guerrilla warfare. On December 16, 1961, the first bombings were dropped on electrical power stations. Two years later, the Ravona raid happened on July 11, 1963, which was a raid of the ANC hideout. Caught by surprise, the ANC leaders were easily arrested, and Nelson Mandela had already been caught on August 5, 1962, currently serving five years in jail. The Ravona trial began in October 1963, but the defendants were put into jail under the General Law Amendment Act. The General Law Amendment Act allowed a police officer to detain anyone for 90 days without trial or communication with the lawyer. Ten African National Congress members, including Nelson Mandela, were accused for 221 acts of sabotage. The accused were Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Dennis Goldberg, Javon Mbeki, Ahmed Kothrada, Lionel Bernstein, Raymond Malaba, James Contour, Elias Mutsuledi, Andrew Malingeni, and Bob Heppel. The trial did not officially start until November 26, 1963, and the prosecutor was Percy Utar. There were four major charges brought against the ANC and PAC, which were Charge 1. The defendants committed over 153 acts of sabotage using guerrilla warfare. Charge 2. The same as Charge 1, but adds on to the guerrilla warfare. Charge 3. They planned acts of sabotage against the Suppression of Communism Act and the same charges as Charge 2. Charge 4 stated that they planned acts of sabotage against the Criminal Law Amendment Act and were accused of being paid to do acts of sabotage. On April 26, 1964, Mandela made a famous speech with his last words, I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea 
of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Look at the judge. And I find that the judge is shaken. And I say, well, the only thing that would make a judge shake is he knows that they're going to be sentenced to death. Despite this breathtaking speech, they were sentenced to jail for life, but was able to avoid the death sentence. The Ravonna trial ended on June 12, 1964, with eight of the 11 accused sentenced to life in jail. Bob Heppel and James Contour was able to escape out of the country, and Lionel Bernstein was found not guilty, but was later arrested and released again. The crime of which the accused have been convicted, crime of conspiracy, is in essence one of high treason. Giving the matter very serious consideration, I have decided not to impose the supreme penalty, which in a case like this would usually be the proper penalty. Because they imprisoned the salient leaders for life, it caused a huge wave of protests. Thus, the apartheid government added stricter regulations to existing laws. In the early 1970s, South Africa was banned from participating in international sport tournaments because of apartheid. On June 16, 1976, thousands of school children began protesting in Soweto because they did not want to learn or have classes taught in Afrikaans, known as the language of the oppressor. The police opened fire, killing about 150 people, mostly school children. This made international news, which caused international governments to respond. In 1977, people in London and Washington began demanding and protesting the end of apartheid in South Africa. Global protests would continue in the 1980s and would eventually lead to the repeal of some of the segregationist laws late in the decade. The Ravonna trial became well known as the trial that changed South Africa. On February 11, 1990, the new president, F.W.D. Clerk, released Mandela from prison and began the process of taking apart the apartheid government. Even after spending 27 years in jail, Mandela's spirit did not break and only strengthened his will to fight for freedom. Some anti-apartheid revolutionists, including Mandela, formed CODISA, the Convention for a Democratic South Africa. The debates and negotiations they had with the South African government on ending apartheid were long and intense, but finally on April 27, 1994, they won the election against apartheid and on May 10, 1994, Nelson Mandela became South Africa's president. These significant changes caused apartheid laws to no longer exist. Many legislations were passed that allowed blacks to gain equal rights to participate in political activity. Mandela also established an organization called Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, which helped to restore buildings and help blacks recover from apartheid. Nelson Mandela passed away on December 5, 2013, but his legacy as an anti-apartheid revolutionist continues on in the hearts of black South Africans. The Ravonna trial not only inspired blacks to rise and take responsibility to fight for their rights, but has also positively affected racial issues between black and white South Africans. The world needs to continue to advocate against issues like racial discrimination, for there are many other people living under persecution due to their race, ethnicity, and or culture. Like Mandela, it is also our responsibility to change the way we are and the way the world is to create a place where everyone may live in peace and harmony.